And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one, two, three good brothers. Ha 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 ha! We have the man who is currently still on his high of of, of the braised tomahawk chopping, the, chopping their way out of the curse. Good brother Akira. Also, fuck you, Astros. Fuck you! Oh. We have the we have the gloriousness of the AEW episode, and the, and the man who ha, and the man who has to deal with the worst time zone differences out of all of us. Good brother Mace. Hey, at least it's a nice sunny day when I look outside my window. <laughs> Fuck you. And last but certainly not least, we have the man guiding you through all of your VTubers and taking over all your anime. With with a with a with the with the power of a giant fucking drill that pierces the heavens. Good brother Shades. Just who the hell do you think I am? <laughs> <laughs> so, initially, I th I thought I know I said last week that I wasn't going to be doing a ep a episode on November uh, recorded on November seventh. That was because I had figured the move to my new place would have been a would have been a much more lengthy affair. But um, reality has a reality has a way of. Proving me wrong sometimes, or in the words of Thanos, reality is often disappointing. <laughs> because we had gotten some help, and we managed to get most of the stuff moved, and I was able to get my equipment all set up in one day. Granted, after that one day, I, w I felt like I had just run the first leg of Tour de France, but <laughs> it but we still managed to get the bulk of it done. I just have to carry a bunch of books and DVDs up from up from the basement. And... This place is a massive improvement. There's a, including ha including a bunch of sh including a bunch of spots where I'll probably be going for my for either my cheat meals or for lunches, including a bread store of all things, where they make the where they're making bread in the place, so <laughs> so it's so it smells like baked bread. <laughs> um. And they and they actually have they actually have stuff that that is not going to torment a. A guy like me who can't eat chocolate. Oh yeah, and within within literal walking distance is an old school malt shop. <laughs> I know where I'm going on Fridays. <laughs> oh. It could it could be could be worse. You could be like me, who's a type two diabetic, lives around the corner from one of the biggest uh, chocolate factories in Australia. Um, <coughs> I literally cannot have chocolate. Otherwise, reverse gears. Fun. Yeah. It's the reason I mentioned this. I've mentioned this a bunch of times, but it's the reason why I started a prank war at work because someone was dumb enough to give me a chocolate cake on my birthday. Yeah, silly people. <laughs> so, now with that in mind, I had two options in front of me. One was bump a bun bump a bunch of episodes up, which um, would have caused some other issues, given what we're going to be talking about later this month. But the other option was to take one of the episodes fr that I have in the reserve list and bump that up to this week. And one of our one of our good one of our good brothers, um, I believe I believe it was I believe it was right I believe it was Ryder, had put had put up a had put up a video from uh, from Thorky's arcade talking about building a roster of a Castlevania Judgment two. And of course, Zan had to chime in and say the best Castlevania game because it's Zan. You shouldn't be surprised mm. by this by this point. <laughs> but truth be told, the idea—it got me thinking about the idea of a two of a two D fighter Castlevania, which technically had been done. But uh, but I wanted I want to go for a full on spin on that concept, which is why this week's episode is. Building the roster, Castlevania Mugen Two. Now, 
We don't need to introduce what Castlevania is. We did. We already did a Castlevania episode months ago. Um, <laughs> but Moog, but Mugen is a is a whole other beast. And, and since this is the first time we're talking about something tangentially related to Mugen, Shades, would you mind giving the rundown that you that you did before we went live tonight? Absolutely. The thing is, is that I actually have experience with Mugen because. Long, long time ago, many, many years ago, in a video that has been lost to time, I actually did a, uh, a random review of the Mugen engine. And yes, that's what Mugen really is. It is, at the end of the day, a basic engine that you can use to customize and create your own fighting game. When I say customize, I mean every single detail of the engine can be customized to your liking. You can customize the, 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 the title screen, the fonts used. You can customize, you know, obviously the, the life bars, the stages, the music. And, of course, you can add any characters that you see fit, whether it be by finding characters online or, if you're really good, creating your own. And there are tools out there to do just that. It's actually a lot easier today than it was, like, 12 years ago when this engine first started coming, uh, making the rounds. And it's the, 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 you've probably seen Mugen around if you've dug her deep enough on YouTube or if you, you've ever seen the Twitch channel Salty Bet. If you know that, then yeah, they use the Mugen engine to set up their custom fights. And yeah, as uh, when you have the ability to create anything you want, people can create some rather broken shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some rather broken shit and some rather fascinating shit. Like yes, there was an. There if you ever see Ronald McDonald run, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> I've talked about I, before we went live. I talked about projects like Dragon Claw, which was which is a very fascinating amount um, degree of sprite work for its time, or things like Babel Sword. But one other that I want to mention. That I feel, I feel it. I feel its presence in history has been has been has been sort of overlooked with the with the rise of Dragon Ball Fighters is Hyper DBZ, which didn't have a very large roster, but it did. But it did. But that's partially because it wasn't reusing um the the more familiar Dragon Ball sprites. It was very much doing its own thing. And was introduced and was introducing concepts that you typically see in more in more developed fighting games, like say Super Armor or the focus attack mechanic that was introduced in um, Street Fighter IV. But the and of, but uh, that brings us to to the original Castlevania Mugen, which was trying to take a bunch of Castlevania characters and do a two D fighter approach with. The kind of controls you would expect to see in a 2D Castlevania, which is nice and all, but I think, but I, but we could pro, but we can probably go a bit bet. We can probably go a bit better. In fact, I said early, I said before we went live, this is a case of life is good, but it could be better. And I did, I. That, and that was where the idea that's where the idea for this came from and there's a few baselines that I want to establish before we go into this whole thing of building the roster one um, there are some characters who are gonna be who, we did end up earlier using the character list from Castlevania Mugen as a template some characters made the cut a lot of characters didn't the other the other thing is um is the ca is instead of trying to do Castlevania in the Castlevania Mugen 2 in the style in the style of what came before I wanted to build around the idea of mixing that with elements of a 2D fighter and I ended up going down the list in ter in terms of 2D fighters I was familiar with and how I could work it, how we could work it so art of fighting no because that game gives me traumatic memories, especially <laughs> Art of Fighting 2. Um, the King of Fighters series, no, that's a little too ridiculous. Street Fighter, no, there's the there's not enough characters with weapons, like we, and and those and those weapons are gimmicks at best, anyways. Um, 
but then I but then I realized that there's one that's almost tailor made for what we want to do. And that is Samurai Showdown. Or for the weebs out there, Samurai Spirits. The reason for that is the motif of of a, of a slower paced but more high, but higher in damage sort of weapon system. In the same in the same way that say Gears of War is a sh is a slower paced but high, but weapons do a whole lot more damage when it comes to shooters. And given give it and there's just the right amount of ridiculousness with the motifs of Samurai Showdown, especially with the um, re with the reboot that we're currently enjoying, um, and that, and because of that, the control setup that I decided to go with is light attack, heavy attack, weapon, and sub weapon, which I think I think strikes a a neat little balance. I had I had thought about do about doing um. <laughs> Now I'm here. I'm hearing her. I'm hearing her laughing in the background. Yeah, she's doing her own thing over there. <laughs> we can hear you, hon. Are her next words going to be good? You have ears. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Pr I'm probably. I'm probably going to get. I'm probably going to get hit for for trying to preempt her. But <laughs> ha old habits die hard. So. I do I do want when I think one of the other goals that we that we want to have with this is giving as many characters their own identity as we can cuz we don't want we don't want to have the clone character problem looking at you looking at you um Mortal Mortal Kombat and looking at you Street Fighter Espe but especially you Mortal Kombat oh I'll get I'll be getting to you later this year <laughs> Your Nether Realm Studios, you're getting a temporary relief of ex a temporary stay of execution. I'll be getting to I'll be getting to you soon. But this is this is where this is where things are going are going to get a bit tricky because so many so many of the so many all the members of the Belmont family use the whip. And it would be very easy to have them just be alternate outfits of each other, a la Super Smash Brothers. But that seems a little bit too easy for us. You know, you know us. We like to challenge ourselves, and I think I already have an an early idea of what we can do yeah. with this. Now, one particular aspect that I that I did decide on that um, early on is when is when picking out a character, you have you. You have a short list of sub weapons. Not the not the full not the full sub weapon list, and I'd actually have it that even even though some sub weapons might be might be familiar, you know, da daggers, crosses, ho holy water, all that stuff. I'm actually considering that there's that not ev even when it comes to the more common sub weapons, not every character is going to have access to all of them. No, in fact, I think some of the uh, characters would actually have their own custom sub weapons. For example, you know, Maria Ma R Maria Ma Renard would have her animal friends. Like she yep. wouldn't use the regular sub weapons. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the but these the choice of sub weapon would be an important one in this hypothetical because it's basically giving a bit of a tell as to what your fighting style is might um, lean towards. I, I liken it to how in the good Call of Duty, your choice of perks was kind of a t was kind of a telltale sign about what weapons you're probably going to use and what playstyle you're going to use. Like if you were picking, say, Scavenger, you're probably going to be running around with an LMG, and you're probably picking Scavenger so that you have better so that you have better chances of getting more a more ammo so you can keep shooting. And with sub weapons, I kind I kind of wanted to go down that that same route. So, do you want do you want to start when, do you want to start on the on the character list, or do you want to start with the ones that we already have listed that we're going to keep? Uh, we could just go down the line and then just note which ones were already marked as from the previous game. Yeah, because it'd be easier just to go it all in one go. 
And it, but before we're... before we before we jump on that, mm-hmm. uh, just have a, a quick little thing about the sub weapons. Like you said, not everybody's going to be using the same sub weapons. Wouldn't that be a, a case of almost? Uh, oh, how to describe it? Basically, it's through balancing out the window. Because in most fighting games, you want to try to keep things as balanced as possible. So if you have characters where they have sub weapons, like say you've got the the girl you mentioned with the animals, that would be a quite an overpowered sub weapon compared to say somebody like Simon Belmont who might be restricted to a throwing axe or a boomerang or something along those lines. Well, that would, that's would, one would, of would, would just better be instead of doing sub weapons, you mix the sub weapons into say special attacks. That way, you're more balanced in the game mechanics. And if you want sub weapons, then you have more generic things that you'd find sort of in the level itself, sort of a la um, well, Mortal Kombat we're not, 4. Uh, thing, thing is, is we're not that. Mm-hmm. And secondly, uh, the sub weapon, uh, some it, it also wouldn't make you certain like even generic weapons, because let's say one of those you know we say the. Mm-hmm. Do you see Maria Renard throwing an axe? If there was one on the ground, yeah. No, she would. She doesn't have the strength to even lift an axe. That's why so, she uses. So, why so, she uses so again, magic. this is this is where this is where the like like you said, it require a lot more programming. But this is where you you would damage scale or such a thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like we would pick, we would restrict certain sub weapons that are that are inherently too OP, and we would also balance the damage on other ones to make sure that you know we don't have a overpowered sub weapon. What I liken what we're do what we're doing in this case is is akin to akin to the akin to the secondary pick, like say the like say the support type in Marvel vs. Capcom two. Or or picking your or picking your particular finisher in ver- in various um, Street Fighter games, or even picking your own picking which of the unlocked HP attacks you're going to be using in Dissidia, and specifically Dissidia NT, which I'd say that one is the is going to be the best analog for this because the choice of HP attack is going to play a significant factor in how you how you play in that game. In the same in the same regard. Um, when when you're picking when you're picking a sub weapon at character creation in this, you're effectively what it's effectively do what you're effectively doing is is that um there that while you may have t- you may have two Shinoas who are who are fi- who are on opposite sides of each other, their choice of sub weapon in this case will ha- will have different leanings towards fighting styles. Or or put more emphasis on some aspects over others. That's that's the approach that's the approach that I'm going with this kind of thing. Yeah, here, okay. here's a, here's a good example. Like let's say, uh, Chanel actually would probably make a good example, and since she doesn't actually have a sub weapon, you would have specific glyphs she could use. Mm-hmm. And I think the way to balance that would be. There are some glyphs that she can use very quick. We use like the cost to use them would be very cheap, but they're also not that powerful. And if you wanted to use the more powerful glyphs, they're far more expensive and likely won't be able to use them that often. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I just sort of when you were talking initially about sub weapons, sort of it confused me as to how it would work within the balancing of the game engine. Yeah, it's understandable. That's why we're having these discussions. We want to make sure that we're all on the same page there. Yeah. So yeah, we. But yeah, we definitely want to make sure whatever we put into this is going to be balanced out, so we don't have too many have a broken character. Mm-hmm. So no, 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 no day one patches. <laughs> yeah, let's let's minimize the amount of updates we got to do. <laughs> yeah. So. Looking at looking at the character list, we're starting off with a bang <laughs> since we so we have to we have to spend a good a good amount of time focusing on the Belmont clan. Oh boy. So I think we and this will be this will be just as much of us um de- debating debating whether or not whether or not we whether or not we <laughs> keep 
we keep a a um, but whether or not we keep a name or or drop um and it go and it goes all the way back to Leon Belmont, Mr. Fuck You and the Knight. <laughs> um I would say I would say we I would say um Leon but Leon Belmont I th I think I think would be would be keepable um and given and given the orb and given the orb system that he ha the, that he has um there's certainly stuff to work with but I'd say I'd say I'd say um I'd say his I'd say his exclusive sub weapon would be his gauntlet yeah like le like of the of the um of the va of the vampire killer subtype i.e. anybody using a whip leon is go is going to be for the is going to be for the counter attacker type of player um let's see the the next the next one in the lineage is trevor Now, this is where it gets tricky. I think it, you know, one, you kind of have to keep Trevor because of the the the, the history. I mean, he is he, for the longest time until Leon was introduced, he was thought to have been the first Belmont. Mhm. Mm and he and he's still marked as the first one to have defeated Dracula. So, what I'm thinking is you keep him, but to separate him from the inevitable Simon Belmont in, in, uh, induction, the difference is going to be about versatility in terms of how they use the whip trevor's use of the whip will be a lot stiffer you know straight shots more like whereas mm -hmm. simon will have will will be based more on super castlevania 4 and have that you know whip in all directions hold the whip out kind of thing you can do all of that mm -hmm. i think you know and then of course different sub weapons i think would also be a good idea Oh yeah. and maybe mm -hmm. and ooh another idea as a special for Trevor, he summons Grant, Sypha, and Alucard for like a big combo attack. That I'd, I'd be per I'd be perfectly I'd be perfectly fine with. Um, I'd also I'd also go um. I'd also go with the idea that his choice of his choice of sub weapon with time can be upgraded. Like a, as he takes damage, the um, the sub weapon goes up tiers. But to kind to kind of reflect the whole the whole leveling up of sub weapons from Castlevania three. Yeah, well, the leveling up thing in in Castlevania one and three was really only just how many how many of those at a time can you throw. Mm -hmm. You know, a level three just meant you could throw three axes at a time. So, eh, because leveling up or having more powerful versions of sub weapons, that's more Richter's area. Yeah. Um. Now, when it comes, now you you already you already kind of mentioned um Simon, and I actually would um with with Simon, I actually would give him some give him some sort of some some sort of berserk like effect. Um. Where he's a where he's able to boost his attack at the expense of of taking more damage, given that um it, given that he's Simon Simon has always is always had a very barbarian like look compared compared to the compared to the other Belmonts. Yeah. Actually, ooh ooh ooh, I got an idea. Huh? Let's let's bring some elements from Castlevania two into this in a and with a twist. Instead of it being a berserk mode, what if it's a cursed mode, where he does get more power, but at the cost, but his uh, health he is weaker because the curse takes hold and thus makes him a lot easier to kill. Oh, good idea! Good mm. idea. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can go, I can go with that. Um, the next, next is um, Juste, and I do, th I do think. Um, I do think ju I do think Juste can Juste can be used in the in the sense of 
one giving him some of the giving him some of the sub weapons that were exclusive to to harmony of dissonance but also also the i'd say i'd say get i'd say um each of the sub weapons that he has is are, is assumed to be associated with one of the orbs not only that i would also see juice day out of the belmonts in the roster would be one of the weaker one of the weaker in terms of because he's more of a magic user than he is with using the whip. I could, I could certainly go. Would you, would you have it instead that um, his whip, his whip doesn't deal, doesn't deal a whole lot of damage, but it does, it does have a bit of pushback. Uh, either do that or do it in a way Fox's blaster does in Smash Bros. While it'll do damage, the enemy will still be able to attack without flicking. Um, then we get to Richter. Big dog. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, Richter is an obvious keep, and again, I think he's the one that should have the ability to have super-powered versions of his sub-weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, give him, the, give him access to the basic set that you would find in most Castlevania games. You know, dagger, uh, holy water, uh, axe, boomerang, maybe the pocket watch, but eh. I don't know. That, that might be a little too OP. I'm of I'm of the opinion that the pocket watch should be scrapped. That's fine. Yeah, what? I wasn't yeah. really. But the other ones, the the cross, uh, the boomerang cross, we definitely need to keep mm -hmm. because that's basically a super attack. Is the the cross storm? Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to when it comes to item crashes, yeah. I would actually consider using that as a um, desperation tactic for this approach. I.e., okay. it's a very it's a very powerful attack that you that you can use that's very hard to dodge, but after that you can't use that sub weapon for the remainder of the match. And obviously, it would cost more energy or whatever we want to go with mm -hmm. to, to let's use. Just go with, let's just go with hearts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd have to, we'd have to make a, a heart system for this, but you know that's not too difficult. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the the this would this would be the one that I'd say if you're going to do the uh, where you have multiple sub weapons that, that mm -hmm. that's a leveling thing. This is where I'd probably put it into would be that, that's kind of what I was getting at with the item crashes. Yeah, yeah, and, and the item crash would probably just take one out of rotation. Mm -hmm. Oh, grant granted granted do, it's a it's a case of risk reward with with that. Um, yeah. Julius, I'm skipping simply simply because of the fact that we barely have any knowledge about how about how he how he works. The only time we fight him in uh, Aria of Sorrow, he fights exactly. He's pretty much Richter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Just make him an ultimate an alt costume and be done with him. <coughs> Um. So now Sonia Belmont, the Be the Belmont that only showed up in a ge in a Game Boy game, and the and the um and the one and the Dreamcast project that never materialized. I think it. I think would be a skip. Again, she pretty much fought like Simon did. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing about her that's different than Simon, really. So it wouldn't really be able to do much with it. Yeah. Oh, but that brings it, up, that... It, it, if if I can interject with the belt with the Belmonts in general, mm -hmm. like we we sort of touched upon the idea of there being differences between each one. Maybe changing up their types would be a good thing. Like you'd have uh, Simon Belmont who'd be more of sort of a, a a speed whip user, multiple multi hit combos, stuff like that with the weapon usage. Then you have someone like uh, Richter, who'd probably be more of a slower powerhouse. Mm -hmm. I'd argue more, the more, I'd more argue we flip those honestly. Simon, is, Simon, while he is a little more versatile with the whip compared to Trevor, actually, here I'd say Trevor's the powerhouse, Richter's the speed, Simon's the balance. I I can go. I can certainly go with that. Um. 
When it comes to Trevor, I'd, I'd actually consider giving him a a um a focus attack like like um gimmick when it comes to his whip, where if he char if he charges it, that whip attack has super armor. Yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty much what you do with high high power characters in that regard. Yeah. Maybe maybe even have let him be sort of like um, it's so like uh, Zangief or Juggernaut in the X Men vs Street Fighter series, where they can where you can actually take a half a hit or a hit before it actually registers damage or something along those lines. Um, super armor for for what it's worth refers to refers to att refers to attacks that aren't interrupted by getting hit. <laughs> Yeah, so you charge up and it gets super on. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, you're still taking you're still taking but, damage, but the animation doesn't cancel. Yeah, but I, I just figured this way you because we are going to have multiple Belmonts in the game, regardless. You know, yeah. to, considering the Belmont clan is a huge feature in the storyline. Um, so multiple Belmonts is an inevitability. It's just splitting them up into different types would help with the gameplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, next would be would be one of the one of the more famous fi figures given given the game that given the game that he debuted playable and well not well the game that he debuted playable and the game that he broke out in that being Adrian Fahrenheit Tepes, aka Alucard. Ooh. <laughs> um. We're gonna spend a good uh, a good bit of time on Alucard because of how diverse his gameplay style is in uh, Symphony of the Night. I mean, two, first of two all, words, two words, glass cannon. Um, I think I think I think that I think that Symphony of the Night does prov does provide a good template for us, and I, and I think that the approach that we'd probably use is is his sword and shield. Um, yeah. The the approach, but the approach that I that I'd go that I'd go with when it when it comes to you when it comes to using hit when it comes to using his his um shield is while he while he's it's basically a stance for him while he's got that shield up he takes half damage but he can't attack. It's basically a it's basically a means to st to um stall to stall while you get into better positioning. The other, the, the other thing, the other um, thing that thing that I was considering is much in the same way that you have that you have that kind of focus attack with um, Trevor. In his case, um, when he he has a he has a similar sort of charge attack, but he but he ends up regaining health from it. So basically, charge up for a soul steal. Mm-hmm. Um, Soul right, Steel oh. or or Dark Metamorphosis. He if if there's if there's a video game analog <coughs> that you that you can utilize with him, it would be Ragnar the Blood Edge from Blaze Blue. Mm. Since it since all of Ragnar's drive attacks give him some slight health recovery. In that case, I'd like to throw out an idea for a super because I think what we could do for the super is have him go on a combo attack with all of his other forms you know mm -hmm. bat mist uh wolf and things like that follow f finish it up with him switching swords to the chris mm -hmm. you, you kind of have to have a reference to the chris in there somewhere yeah yeah i would have it that his mist form is a uh, is a special move that he can utilize but it's but it's a but it's a very ri it's a very risky one to do because the idea of using it continuously would be a little bit too powerful for this so we're not doing that obviously would would, would you allow misform and I, i'm i'm sorry as like uh i'm mostly a street fighter guy so i'll end up making a lot of street fighter analogies uh would you say using misform turn it into a teleport much like akuma's uh teleport that he uses actually no i was considering a perfect dodge it's it's one where you have to get the timing very down pat, but if you do it, you you won't take da you won't take damage. And maybe even add maybe add that if you do it if you do it that perfectly, it's the poison miss, and you actually hit them instead. Yeah, um, the 
I'd liken I'd, I'd liken the I'd liken mist form in this case to to the royal guard style in Devil May Cry. It is for the people who are good at that are the people who are really good at at um at at precise timing. Uh, the other the other the other important thing about the other important thing that I do about it is that um is that any of his attacks can cancel into mist form. So See that see that's already that's already got me worried again from a, a balance perspective because it's it's almost like you are putting Elokard up there as a sort of a high tier uh to use character. Like those who who learn him will be absolute masters and can smash OP in the I, hands uh, of pro players. Go ahead, Shades. I, I it's also why I think I think your idea of being him a glass cannon actually makes that helps balance that a little bit, you know, to keep him, you know, because yeah, you you because you have such a such a fragile body, you have to master those to survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's also the fact that it would mean that his defensive stats. Like, I know you want to try and use the shield. But unfortunately, the shield again would negate the fact of a glass cannon. But you also couldn't attack while using the shield, so it's about setting up for an attack, not so much just staying on defense the whole time. Yeah, that, that's what that's why I said the sh- that's why I said the shield was to is to get is to is is more about getting yourself in pro- in proper position and. One and obviously one one exception to the rule is that the shield isn't going to protect you from back attacks. Okay, right. continue. I'm, I'm just sort of, I'm, again. I'm just trying to analyze this as much as I can. Yeah. I've I've been playing. I've, I was playing uh, fighting games for God, no, God, thirty two years. Hey, we need six, that insight. So, we we so, need that insight. It allows us to figure out. Okay, okay, yeah, we do kind of need to address that. Yeah. Um, next would be Grant Dynasty on my on my list here. And um, well, first off, we're not going to take the approach that Judgment did and ma- and make him look and make him look like a mummy, or a mummy a mummified Voldo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, I you know what with Grant Dynasty with how he accented in the games. I probably could. I probably a uh, a good analogy would probably be Spider Man. I could. I could. I could. Yeah, I, can, I can see. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Especially, I'd I'd say I'd say he I'd say Grant would be the, would be would be the character who's who's going to be used the most by people who understand positioning. Yeah, he jump. He can. He can jump high in the air. He can cling to the walls. You know, and and you can. And he, you can he's his own base character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So by like he, he can have him jump up, cling on the on the ceiling, and say throw his knife at three different distances, uh, close, medium, and far. And prob- I'd yeah. probably say he's the unholy combination of of Spider Man and Vega. Yes, that yeah, actually is I a perfect analogy. <laughs> I think so too. Mm-hmm. Oh. I would. Now, ne- um, next on my list is Saifa Belnades, who. Now the the um the Belnades family is has has been a has been a supporting family th- um throughout 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 the series, mostly for their mostly for their magic use, and have had some intermixing with the Belmont clan. Um, when it comes to when it comes to Cypher, I I kind of I kind of think that the Castlevania anime provides a provides a good template for us to use. She has she has two she has two stances that she switches from when regarding her magic, fire and ice. I think that's Basically. all she needs right there. <laughs> 
Exactly. You can use ice as kind of a control setup, you know, freeze your opponents, keep them at bay, plan out your moves, and then mm -hmm. switch to fire when you're ready to go on the offensive. Mm-hmm. Oh. But obviously, mm -hmm. given that she's not really a fighter per se, yeah. she's obviously, again, I wouldn't say glass cannon, but she's definitely going to be a lot weaker. It's about controlling the battlefield. Yep. Um, okay, this one might be a trick. This one might be a bit tricky, but would we use Hector? Mm. Actually, I think when you, if you were to use the devil forging correctly, if you were able to implement the, uh, the devil forging thing, maybe have him uh, switch to different devils. To offer different uh, fighting styles, I'd be I'd be okay I'd be okay with that. Esen essentially, having it that his sub weapon is his innocent de is innocent devil, which will which will util which will utilize certain effects based on how close or far away it is from him. Yeah, I, I think it's a case of make him kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. And there, there's there's been plenty of characters that have had some that have had some sort of companion to util, to utilize over in various fighting games. Yeah, and the way we describe Hector, the only comparison I can think of is how Kakuro plays in most of the Naruto fighting games. Yeah, I guess, I guess we can go with that. Um, next is Ma is Maxim Kishne, the our first sort, our first swordsman, coming to us from Harmony of Dissonance. <laughs> well, not technically our first swordsman. Alucard still technically uses <laughs> the sword. Yeah, but yeah. Um, when it comes, I now obviously, obviously with Maxim, ha um, he's get, he's get, he's gonna be, he's gonna be on the close range end of things, but. Given, I would I would say that um, given the fact that Maxim is is basically a pure a pure um, swordsman, I think it I think it would be I think I think it would be interesting to to ex to explore to explore that um, with him. Um, <coughs> But let me see. now the because when in you when playing in Ma when playing in Maxim mode in um, Harmony of Dissonance you don't have you don't have access to um po you don't have access to potions and he doesn't have a whole lot of defense um actually I'd like to add something else because yes he is a he does have a sword but according to most of his profiles he's also a martial artist. That is true. That is true as well. Um, I would. I would say. I would say in re in regard to that, he's he has he has a lot more combo potential than some of the other than some of the other characters. And the fact that you can make the case for a martial artist there also sets him apart from a lot of the other characters because having someone who is essentially just using their hands in a game filled with weapon users would add a bit of challenge. But at the same time, you could also have the you have utilize weapons as sub weapons in combos and stuff like that, which would get which would add to the versatility. Well. In in Maxim mode in Harmony of Dissonance, his his sub his sub weapon was throwing the Stellar Sword into its five bladed form, which is which is then th which is then thrown in a loop around him. I'd I'd say I'd say the uh, I'd say the um, fact that he only technically has one sub weapon, that being the that being the Stellar Sword. Um, but the way, but he can either throw the thing in an arc, throw the thing around him as a, as a, um, cl as a close range shield, or not shield, I guess, I guess thorns would be a better, would be a better term, or, th or throw, or throw it straight. Um, 
but uh, but I'd but given the martial artist thing, I'm v I'm very tempted to have I'm very tempted to have him lean a little bit into command grab. I.e. I.e. giving okay. give, him a, give him a bit of grapplerness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So it'd be so instead of being your um, traditional sort of karate style martial artist using punches and kicks, you wanted to sort of make him more of a judo martial art in close. Yeah, his uh, I. Sh the other the other thing to note regard regarding how he is in harmony of dissonance is he doesn't have high jump but he can, but he can triple jump instead of double jumping and he and he um he has some he, he can do a somersault move midair to gain extra to gain extra height even at although at the cost of mp but one but one one particular mo one particular um, move that might be a good finisher for him is his double spirit, which is basically d basically doing a couple um, copies of himself. And the reason the reason why w I wanted to go with I wanted to go with that is I s with him being a bit of a martial artist I see him I see him <coughs> using both both sword and cl and close range fight and close range fighting, which is why I leaned into the whole. Um, command grab thing. Um, but I would I would say he'd be I would say he would be a a somewhat all a somewhat all rounder who who's um who's going to have a heavy leaning towards close range. Uh, but the re the reason for that, s but going with that lengthy slide as as one of his potential attacks. The main reason that I'd put that in is to is to negate negate the disadvantage that would normally happen when you have a close range fighter in with so, with so many whip wielders. I.e. that I.e. that slide can go right can go right under the whip and get him in close. Which I th I'd say that's an effective punish. I have no issues with it. Please continue. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> because you basically answered my one big question. There was how is he going to get around whip wielders that are going to have like an extension that's going to take up at least a quarter to maybe even a third of the screen per attack. So having something like a slide to get in underneath that would be a good way for him to get in there for the grapples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now next is. Is um Maria is Maria Men Maria Renard, and Ooh. actually I've got something for this because right. I've been taking a look at everything and I was trying to think how can we make this work instead of basing it on R Maria Renard from Rondo of Blood, let's instead focus on Symphony of the Night Edition because little known fact in the Sega Saturn version of, the, of Symphony Maria was a was a boss. You actually in that scene where you in that one scene where you meet up with her to gain the dark glasses, you actually have to fight her first. She has she tests you, and uh, she ain't no fucking pushover. No, she ain't. <laughs> and I think if we based her fighting style more on that as opposed to just having the animal summons, I think we could work more with that. She can punch and kick, and she can use some sub weapons, but she can also perform spells based on her animal friends. Would you say that her sub weapon is summoning her her guardians? Yeah, yeah, we could pick a different guardian to, for different uh, setups for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's something I'd be I'd be I'd be will, I'd be willing to go with. Um she already ha she, in Rondo of Blood, she already had a short list. She already had a short list of sub weapons, as well as the fact that she summoned doves as her as her primary attack. Yeah, but that'd be a tr that 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 would, that would be like a, it would stick out in this kind of thing. But having it 
so that she can just she can also do punches and kicks on top of that. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting somewhere that plus, and she also can do a high jump in uh, Symphony because of her magic. Yeah, um, I do find it I do find it interesting that she was planned on being a playable character, but time did not allow for that. Yeah. Um. And of course, and of and of course, there's the there's the whole thing with the with the Saturn version, which um, is, which probably got new life when people when emulation became a thing. Yeah. Um. Next is Shinoa. I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make the song joke. Everybody's done that. <laughs> if you want to make a song joke out of that song, go with the classics and use Weird Al. <laughs> but, now, as we stated earlier, obviously the glyph system is going to be a big part of her combat. Mm -hmm. And I do think I do think that all of the all of the weapon all of what would be considered weapon glyphs in in Order of Ecclesia. Those should those should just be special attacks. Yeah. Or at the very least, I think we should have like different weapons mapped to different attacks. Like, mm -hmm. have a have a sh have a short sword be her her weak attack. Have like something like an axe be her her heavy attack, and her weapon eh, probably pick something out from the list. I'd say I'd say one I'd say um. The of, the more offensive of the three Dracula glyphs would would work on that front. Oh. Or we could give her one of the bow glyphs for a ranged attack. Yeah. But the key, the key th the key thing with the key thing with her is that I f I feel I feel that the choice of sub weapon glyph is going to be is going to be a lot more d is going to be a lot more of a determining factor in her in her playstyle versus versus some other people's choice of sub weapons. Cuz I I do I do feel like that her sub weapon glyphs should be the more spell-like um glyphs that she ha that she had. Yeah. Also, I think not as a super but as a desperation attack. If like if you're down to super low health, mm -hmm. you can use the Dominus Glyph, kind of as a sacrifice play to create like maybe a double KO situation. If you know you're gonna lose anyway, if I go down, I'm taking you with me. Mm. Mm. As tempting as as tempting as it would be, that's that's the kind of thing that works really great in a single player, but not so great when um when you're basically giving people a Legally mandated for form of rage quit. You know what? Fair, fair. <laughs> um, just like I, I just was trying to think of some way to incorporate that because that's a big part of the whole story anyway. Yeah. Um, Albus, on the other hand, I think would be significantly easier to do. Um, I think I think with I think with Albus, it could be. A lot, a lot of his attacks and his specials are going are going to be firing magic projectiles from his gun. The key, th the key thing that I, the key thing that I'd go with is the different special moves determine angle, determine projectile speed, determine how many projectiles. Basically, his his whole goal is to turn is to turn the arena into an obstacle course. I think that I think that'd be a good way to to utilize a character like him. Yeah, again, kind of control the battlefield in in his own way. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, he do, he does ha he does have those he does have those flame ki those flame kicks and the and the like, but he but he's very much a marksman before he before he's a martial artist. Yeah. Right. And of course, his special would obviously involve the his main glyph, the Acer Batas. Mm -hmm. Oh. Now, next would be Nathan Graves. 
who is who technically has the vampire killer, but is but is but isn't part of the Belmont clan technically. Mostly because of the fact that Circle of the Moon is in is in a weird space where it's better to consider it a spin off than actually try and put it somewhere in the timeline. Mm. Uh, but I'd I'd say hit I'd say his I'd say his particular his parti his particular sub sub weapon should be tied to a should be tied to some sort of DSS mode stance since I have I have a bit of fascination with the with the with the card system that he that Nathan Gray's utilizes in Circle of the Moon to the point where yeah. and yet and yes this will. To the point where I actively considered the question of how how would I can how would I convert the the um the element and effect cards from that into Gaia memories. <laughs> hey, it work. Hey, if it work, it. Hey, it's it it's on that same kind of motif. You look at. You look at the Gaia memories in W in in double, and it is element and use. So can't say I was can't say I was off base on this kind of thing. Oh. Now, uh, now, if I wanted to be a smartass, I'd just say that when you play it, that when you play as um when you play as Nathan Graves, the the um graphics get darker. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell no! Nah. No, that no, there's no there's no way I'd be able to get away with that. Oh, and t technically speaking, it's not. It, it isn't called Vampire Killer. It's just called the Hunter Whip. That he that he has. But I'd say, but um, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say the. The the approach that the approach that he has is that the, your choice of sub weapon is more tied to the more more tied to, more tied to the a, more tied to the at, tied to the um action type um cards. So like the first one that you the easy one that could that you could probably use is um Mercury, i.e. in i.e. whip enhancement. Mm. Um, the the approach that I'd pro that I'd probably I'd probably take <laughs> is there's is a bit of a soft timer regarding the activation of DSS mode. So you have you have you have you have a time where your where your move set is going is going to change, but you're not but you can't stay in it all the time. You're only going to be in it for maybe five seconds at most. Kind of like a boost, like a, a temporary boost. A temporary boost, or a temp or in some cases, a temporary change in your in your fighting style, to do um to offset people. But it's more, but it's more about knowing when to use it. Uh, I was tempted to bring up the alternate modes, but ne but from Circle of the Moon, but nah, but the. The action, given given the action cards, um, there's some that there's some that I would there's some that I wouldn't take, like v Venus and Jupiter wouldn't wouldn't work. Um, Mars might be might be dipping into Shinoa's territory. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Diana what Diana would work. Um, Ap Apollo. Mm, I don't. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Neptune, no. Saturn, no. I. I want to keep. I want to keep familiar manipulation to heck to um Hector. Um. <laughs> Uranus, absolutely not. That would be a that Uranus would be a finisher. <laughs> and Pluto, no. So. I'd say I'd say there's still I'd say there's still a good I'd say there's still a good amount to use. Um, but speaking of form switching, that brings us to Cornell. Blue Crescent Moon. And 
I'd say Cornell, I'd say looking back at it, Cornell had probably one of the better designs from Judgment. <laughs> Um, Cornell is get it. There may have been some martial arts leanings with Maxim. Cornell is an out and out martial artist. Yeah. And I would I would say that the that the approach we ha that the approach that that we have with Cornell is is the is the fact that. He is that he is that he is going to be. Well, the, here's the big question: Do you should we have it that he is always in werewolf <laughs> form, or that he switches between human and werewolf in a fight? Actually, I think we can draw from another game to give uh, Cornell's battle style. Make it something like Bloody Roar. I I can actually go with that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, build up a meter, he can then transform into it for a limited time, and then have his finisher be accessible during that form, maybe, mm -hmm. and have that use up the rest of his bar. I think that'd be a good way to set it up. Yeah. I think so, too. And it'll totally make my boy Jeremiah Isaiah happy. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Now, let's see, the next... The next one that I ha the next one that I have on the list is Henry Oldry from Legacy of Darkness. He was basically the alternate character in that game. Yeah, I, th I think that's a skip. Yeah, I don't really know how much. Honestly, I think Connor or uh, Cornell is really the only character because Carrie Fernandez. What could we do with her? I know we put it, I know we put her on the list earlier, but the more the more that I think the more that I think about it, it's there's not a there's not a whole lot to her her particular move set to utilize. What little she has is pretty much based off of Cypher, so again, you just have another Cypher. Yeah. The same cannot be said for the next person I have on the list, Eric Lacard. Oh, now this is where I think ladies and gentlemen, we got our dragoon. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would say that that um I'd go that you're you're going you're going to have a you're going to have a whole lot of jumping. You're going to have a whole lot of I'd actually I'd actually probably give him a se a semi-separate move set that is solely for air solely for air attacks. I uh, he has more yeah. air attacks than he has ground attacks. Um and he's a good mid-range fighter with the with the Alucard spear. Yeah, um, I'd actually, I'd, I'd actually, I'd actually considered, um, a, that the, I was, I was considering having the idea of him having a mid-air spear throw that he could use to jump again, but then you'd have to balance how he'd fight without the spear, and not, and it's for the best that I don't, um, what I will, what I will, what I will say with him is that I think, if there's anybody who would be who would who would be a who would be a cl would be a classic, um, not necessarily a rushdown, but definitely somebody who's go who has a whole lot of charging attacks, it would. And, th and by that I'm by that I don't mean hold hold up for more damage, but more, um, more go more going straight in certain directions. It would be him. Um, yeah. But it, but at the at the same vein, I'd say one of the disadvantages that you could probably have with him is that it's easy to overshoot or have bad positioning. Because if you do, if you dodge if you get dodged while doing one of these charge attacks, you're going to be vulnerable. Yeah. And in that same vein, I'd say a lot of I'd say a lot of his charge um, specials. Have an eight-way approach, which makes him highly maneuverable, but it's a risk-reward thing. Since if you but would, would would you would you maybe think about instead of sort of basing uh, the card around a, a dragoon type, would you think sort of more um, 
uh, Sung Ming Na from Soul Cal- Calibur? Not, re- not really, because while well, Sung Ming Na is a spear user, um, she doesn't her a lot of her a lot of her spear setups are not based around thrusts, whereas Eric very much is based around thrusts, phrasing. <laughs> giggity giggity. Oh. There's and of course there's also the fact that one is a 3D one is a 3D and we're working with a 2D framework. Well, yeah. Well, I'm just sort of thinking more more in the style of how a weapon is handled and used yeah. more so than 3D versus 2D cuz even though Soul Calibur is a very 3D game, most play, mostly plays like a 2D. Essentially, that's why I sort of went to that comparison. The only other character I could think that would be a comparison would be uh, Hildegard from uh, Soul Calibur Four. I, the, um, truth be, truth be told, if there's. If there's anyone who, if there's, if there's anyone who I think I'd be using as a basis, um, it's John Talbain from Darkstalkers. Talbain, that that's basically Cornell. That's what I was thinking. Like, where, <laughs> yeah. Wait, where did you get, get that one? Where did you get that one from, man? <laughs> not in not in terms of aesthetic, but in terms of move set with the amount of charges that he does. And the, again, and, again, again, I'm seeing Cornell. <laughs> you're you're focused. You're focused too much on. You're getting hung up on the werewolf part. I'm mostly talking um, move set in the, in this regard. I went with him because the approach that the approach that I'm con, that I'm considering with Eric is him doing these him doing these um, lance charges in whatever direction he wants. Oh. now. With when it comes to Stella and Loretta Lecard, um, much much like with Jonathan, much like with Jonathan, Jonathan and Charlotte from Portrait of Ruin, um, it's a case of a t- when you pick when you pick that particular slot, you get both of them. Their sub weapon is switching between the two of them. One of them is a one of them is a martial approach, and the other one is a is a caster. You're a simpl- a simplified version of both that you have to switch between. Essentially, a stance fighter. Hmm. Possibly. A- again, it's like I'm I'm just still looking back to reference. I've even gone back to looking at Eric from Judgment, mm-hmm. and sort of how how the directional playstyle worked in that. <sighs> But, but again, like, like I know we don't really want to be referencing that game as a reference for goddamn anything, especially since but... <laughs> Eric, Eric in Judgment was OP. Yeah, and I, I could I can also see, like even in Judgment, the the Eric wasn't really a sort of a thrust style character. The lance that was used was more used more like a um, more like a great axe than anything else. Very lots of high swings and stuff like that. The only time you really got to see any anything close to a dragoon was the um, the ultimate or the finish. Yeah, I was utilizing bloodlines as my template. Believe me, after watching Judgment, I can see why. Mm-hmm. Um, but i i would I would say I would say to. To differentiate between jo- between Jonathan Morris and Charlotte Alwyn, who would also be using this two in one setup, um, I'd say I'd say that I'd say that Ste- I'd say that um, Stella and Loretta are are far more um, hyper focused. Actually, an, e- an easy an easy way is that the, is at the magic end of the equation. One of them is using ice, the other is using fire. But more, but moreover, I'd say I'd say that 
the that um a big a bigger difference between the two is the is the Lacard girls don't have don't have as um can't won't be won't be able to maintain won't be able to do the switch as often. I.e., once you do that whole switch, there is a bit of cool t a bit of cool down, and you can't do it again until that time is passed. Um. Another possibility is is introducing some sort of timing thing where after a successful attack, um, you can switch and if you and get and get a and get a one time boost. You know, putting an emphasis on timing, but more of timing in the in the form of combat rhythm. And of co of course, if you switch and the and you end up getting hit, well. You lose the you lose the potential for that boost. So I, th I think that would be a, I think that would be a good way to to emphasize swi emphasize switching between the two characters, in that regard. Ah, uh. no, no finding any complaints, so mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> If you're not hearing us saying anything, then there's no complaints. So please continue. Yeah. Um, next is Soma Cruz. Ugh. Once yeah. again, a very versatile fighter. The soul system is definitely going to be a big part of his uh, st fighting style. Mm -hmm. um, incident. Incidentally, I'll, I'll say I'll say this: um, Soma Cruz downgraded his wardrobe from Arya to Dawn. Yeah, and Arya had that badass uh, fur coat thing. Mm -hmm. Then again, a, then again, a bit of a bit of a, then again, a bit of a problem I have with I have with um some entries is it's very clear when Ayami Kojima wasn't on hand. Uh, but when it comes to so when it comes to Soma, um. Yes, the, I'd say I'd say the I'd say we can easily represent the soul system in his special attacks and his sub weapons. Um, I think Le I think Legion would make a good would make a very reliable and effective um, sub um, sub weapon soul for him. You know, beca you know because who do because who doesn't like th who doesn't like three lasers out of nowhere. <laughs> Um, it would. It's um. I w I had th I had thought about having his having his ultimate be the um be the magic carpet soul, but that might be pushing things a little bit. <laughs> you know, ha have the have the amount of hearts that th that a character has and the amount of HP that they have switch. Mm. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, that that would that would be that would be a bit that would be a bit a bit too much. Um. But I'd say I'd say I'd say that the the. It's it's very tr it's very tricky to handle much like with Alucard it's very tricky to handle him because of how, because of the vari the variety that he can go with um although there may there may be there may be a couple gameplay elements that we could that could probably be that could probably be utilized Um, one of th one of them being the cr one of them being the critical attack, which is basically his own version of item of item crushes. I c I think I think we could go with the idea that he's cr that 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 he that he is a, that he has a f that he has a few. 
ex he has a few extra effects he can put on his he can put on his um his special moves. Essentially giving him EX specials. Hmm. Um, I had thought about in I thought about figuring out a way to intro to introduce the magic seals from Dawn of Sorrow, but that's too tied to Dawn of Sorrow's um story. That and that and the whole thing was just a was just a giant gimmick for the DS. No. <laughs> Oh. In so instead, instead the the magic seal th the magic seal thing I'd ra I'd rather skip. Um, as far as the power, I'd say I'd say we have a mix of EX moves and possibly him having some degree of debuff with the whole power of dominance. Mm. We we haven't really had a deep we haven't really had a debuff character yet. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so ne the next one I have on the list is Yoko Belnades, and that one I think should be a skip. Yeah, again, much much like uh, Julius Belmont, we don't really know anything about her aside from the fact she's a Belnades, and we didn't really see her fight much, so mm. we basically would assume she just has the same kind of magic as Sypha. Yeah. Um. Elvis and Aeon, I am sk I am skipping, because well, <laughs> Elvis is from Moonlight Rhapsody, which I don't think which I don't think any of us tu um, touched because it's a mobile game. Even though I do like Elvis's design, but I also want to skip it on principle of I don't want to put a character in named Elvis because I know because I know what jokes will come. Oh God, yeah, we never hear the end of it. And Aeon skipping. Um, I had thought of, but when that when it comes to when it comes to sec when it comes to secondary characters, on on the list, um, the on, the only one the first one that the first one that pops out to me is Hugh Baldwin. The uh, the the other swordsman. I would say that he also ha as as his sub weapon. He does have DSS mode, but I'd but I'd say in I'd say in his I'd say in his case, it is it is a it is an it is an alternate move set that he can tap into for a few seconds. Instead instead of some of the elemental trickery that Nathan Graves has. Um, although I I do th I do think that his whole two sub two sub weapon th thing that he thing that he pulls uh, might might make for a good thing as DSS mode because in his boss fight he does utilize some of the same sub weapons you do but once his mm. health is down once his health is down to a certain amount when he starts flashing red he he tosses two sub weapons in one throw. Essentially, the essentially he does the Pluto Serpent combo. Um, but I I would I would say that he, I would say that in his case he he's a, he's able to, he's able to he's able to utilize a lot of a lot of area control in short bursts. And incidentally, he was he was originally supposed to be playable. And in fact, that was shown. That was shown at the Tokyo Game Show in 2000, according to the wiki, at least. But let's see. Let's see. Who do we? Who do we have beyond that? Ada? No. Let's see. Da, da, da. Oh, looking down the list, we have Hammer, and. Shades, I distinctly recall that you had something in mind when it came to Hammer. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, again, since he's a military guy, first of all, you know the guy is going to... 
Um, you cut out for a second. Yeah, my mic cut out there for a second. Anyway, considering he's a military guy, first of all, you go, you know the fucker's packing some serious heat. <laughs> he's oh, yeah. going to be bringing a lot of guns to the table. I, I would say I'd equate it to something like similar to War Machine from MVC2. Mm-hmm. Just bring all kinds of explosives, guns, rockets. Just you know, I, he's a he's a long range fighter. He's gonna keep everyone at keep everyone at bay and just shoot the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. the, the, the trouble is that he's also strong enough. He's also would come off as strong enough that he could hold himself at a fight close range. But he's at his best when he's at a distance. I would I would say I would say that. Hit that his move set is his move set is a mix of command throws and ranged attacks. Yeah, when that he, works. When he's up close, he's got a better variety of th of throws to take advantage of. When, but he but when it comes to when it comes to special moves that aren't that that are that are close range that aren't throws, he doesn't have a whole lot. A lot of his special moves involve so, involve some degree of ranged attack. And tr and truth be told, the the intent for this is that you're doing command throws to get them off of your back, so that you can shoot them more. Yeah. Um. And uh. And obviously the 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 um obviously light and heavy would just could just as easily be pistols and shotguns. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Or so, or sawed off if you prefer. But I'd say I would now. Um, I also saw Genya Arikado on the list, which which is that's that's gonna be a case of no. That's just Alucard in a different coat of paint. Yeah, that's that's the one time you could argue for alternate costumes. Mm hmm. Um. There is one, there is one from there is one from Lament of Innocence that I that I would like to argue putting in Joachim Armster the spur, the spurned vampire boss that you that you fight in that one and could and after beating the game could play as his whole his whole gimmick what is telekinetically controlling five swords and i'd say i'd say that's a i'd say that's a perfect gimmick that we can that we can utilize one for his, one for his sub weapon of diff, of different sword types and two the fact that when utilizing his swords he has he has to wait for them to come back to him before he can use them again I'd I'd say he I'd say he would be uh, he would be a degree of a degree of ranged attacker, but it's more it's more the fact that he has to, he has to constantly do this whole thing of of attack and then play de and then play defense. I e if you try to if you try to be overly aggress aggressive or a rushdown approach, you're probably going to get your ass kicked playing as Joachim in this case. Mm. Uh, now Walter, I'm skipping Walter because Walter is basic is basically Dracula in all but name. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that would also apply to Graham Jones from Aria of Sorrow. Yeah, because he's mm -hmm. basically just using Dracula's move set. Mm -hmm. Um. In the same vein, Isaac is also off the table. Cuz it cuz there's no way I could do it without it without it being too close to Hector. Um, we could do the one we could do Isaac from the Netflix series, but we can't. No, I'd rather not. Um Now, Shaft, I think we can I think we kind of have to. Yeah, but the which is go which is certainly going to be tricky since since um sh since well Shaft tr Shaft was trying to go out of his way to not be seen, 
<laughs> but I would I would say he de I would say he definitely I'd say he would definitely um work al work along the work along the vein of of a of our caster t of our caster archetypes. Um, oh yeah, that kind of that's an easy one there. Um I would say that I would say that his whole his whole thing of of summoning or, of summoning orbs for for attack and de for <laughs> attack and defense is how he'd operate. Um, the approach him, the approach I'm considering is that at the start of a fight, all his orbs are neutral. His specials turn turn the orbs into certain elements, or attune them to certain elements, which can which can be with which can be used for some of his for his sub weapon effects. I.e. he, i.e. he has to he has to build up his sub weapons in co in combat instead of being able to use it willy nilly like everybody else. Makes sense. Um. That's the that's the closest that's the closest I can work with with him. Yeah. Now we should also bear in mind that a lot of these antagonists we can we may not have to play as them, but we should definitely consider them as boss fights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'd say that would be a good way to make to make him, to make him a um, <coughs> boss fight. Yeah. Same goes for stuff like Barlow and Camilla. Mm -hmm. Um. So let's see. Uh, Richter, we already covered. Albus, we already covered. Bar. Barlow is also a caster, and well, first off, let me let me get, let me get a second for to load the damn thing. Um, I'd say. I'd say he. I'd say um. You know how you know how I mentioned Juste is is a bit is a bit of a counter attacker. I'd say mm -hmm. I'd say that he would I'd say that he would work along a similar manner, but it's more the fact that his primary special is activating his is activating his barrier. Um, if a, it, when certain attacks hit it, he can he can utilize count he can utilize counter attacks. It's the counter attacks where his where his move set actually expands. Mm -hmm. That's I'd say I'd say that would be I'd say that would be the um be, the best the best approach for him. Because because uh, otherwise he's just otherwise he's just a caster boss, which is certainly accurate, but not all that interesting. Um, the next the next one is Carmilla, and <laughs> now gr now granted Carmilla only only appeared in Circle of the Moon, but the concept of Carmilla or or some sort of XP of Urzabet Bathory, I feel like I feel given the given all the Gothic horror stuff in, within Castlevania, we're almost obligated to utilize her. Mm-hmm. Um. As now, as far as, as far as how Carmilla's always always struck, especially with her boss design, always struck me as as the as a as a um, blood as a blood manipulator. Although, although, po although, um, another approach that could po that could possibly be done with her is is her own is her own is her own version of of utilizing familiars given the uh, given the skull that she rides on when you went in her boss fight. And. 
and in the but I'd I'd say I'd say that she I'd say that there would be a whole lot of blasting when it comes to her. She's on the other end of the spectrum compared to Hammer. Hammer or um Al or Albus. The the key di the key difference though is one I'd say I'd say that a lot of her projectiles are are straightforward and two you have the you have the mix up possibility of her project of her using the skull as the source for her projectiles instead of from herself. Mm. Uh, just to, just as a way to differentiate her from some of the blasters that we've had previously. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, when it com when it comes to. When it comes to the remaining ones on the on the list on the list that they have, um, not a whole not a whole lot sticks out. But we do have we do have a few more minor and more um, minor <laughs> entries that can that can be util that can be utilized. Um, so. With the with the list that we mentioned, we got Soma, we got Hammer, we got John and Charlotte, Hugh, Max. Uh, I just realized there's a whole subseries that we haven't even talked about yet. What? Oh yes, you're ref you're referring to Lords to the Lords of Shadow series. Yeah, we kind of missed a Belmont there. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Gabriel. Can he not? <laughs> Okay, here's here's the big question. Should should we do Gabriel at Gabriel as Ersu Dracul or Gabriel as his as in as in when he was still a member of the Brotherhood of Light? Uh, uh. I would say por qué no los dos? <laughs> have them be two separate characters. Cuz they have two very distinct fighting styles. Yeah, the key thing with both of them is that I do, I do think that th that um that these first off they they already have a they already have a fairly unique um sub weapon um list that they can pick from. But I I would ha I would have it that that a key part of their move set is the light and shadow magic. Certain yeah. special attacks that they have are cons are treated as li are treated as light magic, and certain ones as shadow magic, which are going to work this are going to work more or less the same way as it as it was in the game. Light magic recovers HP. Shadow magic does more damage. Um, I had thought about introducing the focus gauge from Lords of Shadow, but um, it doesn't quite work in this kind of game. Especially when no, eventually you are gonna get hit. Yeah, it's. I'm not gonna say it's rare, but it's gonna be uncommon that pe that people do perfects. And the focus gauge is the most reliable way to regain magic. So that so that's not gonna work. The only the only one of there's the only um sub weapon that I'm declaring off limits is from Lords of Shadow One, the crystal. And Lords of Shadow Two, the Dragon Transformation. <laughs> the other ones are the other ones are free are freely on are freely on the table. And I would say, truth be told, between between the between the two of them, I'd fi I'd find I'd find I'd find I'd find um, the dr I'd find his Dracula time to be to be, to have a lot more um, gameplay potential, given the fact that he, given the fact that his light magic is the Void Sword in that case. Uh, since you ha you have the, you have the choice between using a Blood Whip, using the Chaos Claws, or using a um, or you or using the Void Sword. <coughs> Although that might that might just as well be ch be challenging to work with. Um, and true. 
And um, and I know somebody might say, what about what about what about Alucard and Mirror of Fate? What about Alucard and Mirror of Fate? I'm not doing two Alucards. Especially when the only difference is one naturally has the Kasei Grimm and the other doesn't. <laughs> also, um, Mirror of Fate was the beginning of the end for the Lords of Shadow experiment. Because instead of sticking to their guns and going with the, and going with the linear approach that they had utilized, they, start, they, they started to try and play both sides. And when oh, you please you know everyone... How that turned out. Yep, when you please everyone, you please no one. Uh, also, Mirror of Fate was a little bit on the short side. But... I'd say when it, I'd say when it comes to the Warriors of Light, we've we more or less we more or less covered. But there's a few Warriors of the Night that I think I think are I think are worth talking about that we didn't. First off, Death. Because you cannot have a Castle game a Castlevania game without two characters, Death and Drac. We'll get to Drac later. First, I want to tackle Death. Yeah. Death. Obvious, obviously, you do you do have the whole thing with you do have the whole thing with the scythe. Um. Honestly, I think with death, he's a he's a he's a boss that like he would be a boss that likes to control the battlefield because ninety nine nine times out of ten when you're fighting death in the games, he's usually trying to keep you at bay with his like floating size. Mm -hmm. I would I would say a lot of his strategy would be keeping you at bay and the, and if you get too if you get too close and and waste and end up not taking advantage quick enough then he uses his own scythe. Yeah. That tends to be his normal uh MO. Mhm. Mm um and of co of course of course late of course later in that kind of boss fight you can have it where he decides to do the teleport and then scythe attack. To keep to keep you on your toes instead of do, basically mixing that up with um, keep away so that you can't turtle, or or rather, if you're gonna turtle, you got to be careful about it. And yes, th and yes, that's that teleport and scythe attack will always be a back attack. The whole thing because the whole thing about it is death is trying to keep you on your toes. Um, but next would be Dario, Bossy, and... Or, sorry. Yeah, it is Dario. I don't know why I thought it was Darlo for a second. Dario, Bossy, and and Agni. This... Dario is going to be a pure brawler. He, he is going to be a martial artist, in a sense. Mm -hmm. But more of a pure, just, in-your-face punches and kicks with a nice little bit of a flaming twist. I would I would say that flaming twist is essentially where instead of Agni being being a extra form in a boss fight, it's a stand. <laughs> it is a fucking stand. <laughs> oh, you cut the little car. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah and yes I, and. And yes, it's a little bit on the nose that th that we have a fi that we have a fire wielding stand when uh, when magicians red is a thing. But, but let's be honest here, folks. This wouldn't be the first time Castlevania has made a motherfucking JoJo reference. Nope. <laughs> hell, hell, they've made plenty of references to other things. Hell, Arya Sorrow has common writer references. No, I'm not kidding. The kicking skeleton and the ancient belt. Yep. Mm -hmm. But the approach, the approach that I see with with Dario with Dario Bossi is that his 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 um Agni sh Agni shows up for hit for a lot of his spe a lot of his special mid range attacks. Um, he'd probably be, he'd probably be the only boss that has a, that has a um mid that has a throw with any amount of range. Yeah, he's gonna toss you like a goddamn rag doll. Yeah, the key, the key, um, the key weakness that he that he'd have in this case is the fact that he doesn't that none of his attacks have super armor, even uh, even his Agni attacks don't. 
So if you can, so if you can get in, if you can get in and stun and stun him, he's then you'll have an advantage. Um. Now, but speaking of super armor, even though even though it's a common enemy, um, I had put Min I put Minotaur on the list because this is this would be our, this is our requisite heavy boy. Yeah, you gotta have that boss fight with a guy who's just pure power is gonna kick your ass. And I would say that all of his hammer attacks do have super armor. He basically, um, he's basically the Motaro of this game. I think would be a good analogy. Yeah, I could go. I can go with that. Oh, obviously not nearly as big. No. <laughs> uh, and Mace, when when you admit when you had mentioned teleporting, I feel like that particular gimmick would be best served with the next entry I have on the list, the succubus. Yeah, you could do that. I guess, uh, you know, you had Morgan and Lilith who would both have teleports in, nice, in uh, Darkstalkers. Mm -hmm. Oh. Now, I w as tempting as it would be to have the, to, to be a bit on the nose and ha and ha and have the succubus use soul fist, I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh. Inst instead, uh, instead, I'd, pr I'd probably, ha I'd probably have it that the that the amount of the amount of that there's a whole amount of um amount of short range and long and long range teleports that the succubus has has at her disposal uh, as well as well as as well as the as well as the fact that um fight the succubus is the dirty fighter I talked about the whole teleporting behind you when it came to death, but um, the succubus is the one who's going to do it more often. Yeah. Espe especially if you, especially if you play defense. Um. Uh, next is a is a vampire who's shown up here and there and is implied to be a top lieutenant of Dracula, and that is Ulrox. Oh. When it but when it comes when it comes to when it comes to Olrox, the thing that always strikes me about his design is the amount of reach that he seems to have. And I would I I probably would have it that he's got a whole lot of poking. Is that seem that seems to be that seems to be the most ideal way to to have a character like Olrox work. It's a bit tricky because he hasn't shown up all that he hasn't shown up all that much, although he's been referenced. And when and when he do, when he does show when he does show up, it's his vampire form is just a prelude to his more reptilian form. Although maybe you could have Ulrox be a be be the knight equivalent to Cornell, just switch, just switch, just going into a lizard man form instead. Now, uh, if, if we're if we're making Orlox a boss, that you can do two stage bosses with mm -hmm. those kind of things. I think that'd be the better way to handle Orlo Orlox. All right, I I can I can get that. Um, let's. But the now the other ones on the list: Carmilla, Shaft, and Barlow. We've already tackled, so that leaves only one left. That being Dracula. Time for the big guy. Yep, and the the. T the teleportation at, and and projectile, I think, I think is, I think is inevitable. Um, I think for you this gotta one, keep that. 
Yeah, I think for, for Dracula, we got to make it a three-stage boss fight. Yeah. We got to go all out for this. So I, w I would say I would say that that kind of approach would be ideal would be ideal for the first form, um, you know, doing a yeah. whole lot of teleportation and magic attacks, not really, not in, not really taking you seriously, not doing any sort of getting his hands dirty kind of thing. Yeah, I think that well, makes lots the most lots sense. of lots of distance. He keeps out of arm's reach a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd say if you're comparing <laughs> this to anything, compare it to. Uh, Onslaught from Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah, I can, yeah, go, I, I can go. I think that's kind of what I'm going for in general is on is something akin to Onslaught where it, or uh, what's the the boss from MVC two? Abyss. Mm -hmm. Abyss. I think that'd be the pr you know start with you know but you know start with a, a pretty an easy uh, easy but you no know, spa uh, teleport spammy form that the second stage. Would probably be where a somewhat more. I, I kind of want to go. I'm debating whether or not to have like just a regular monster form, or a more humanoid form for the second stage. I'm actually. I'm actually. I'm consider. I feel like the monster form should be saved last. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I'm thinking like there's going to be the big monster form, like the one that takes up the whole screen. Oh, no. I. I was thinking use the monster form for the second form and then take a page out of the Dracula X Chronicles and use true Dracula from that fight. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Just have something that takes up the whole screen. You know, sits in the background kind of thing. Again, Onslaught would be the best example of that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd say that it's it's Truth be told, I, w I was con I was considering in the s in the um, s in the second form, you have an integration of 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 the keep away tactics as well as hit as well as them integrating a whole lot of a um a whole a bit of rush into his into his setup. Basic basically yeah. ta basically taking off the code, and now the gloves are starting to come off. Um. And in in the in the third in the um third form, you have you have a mix of these of these wide ranged attacks as well as copies of his as well as um brief copies of his of his second form to do close range attacks. Um, essentially familiars. Right. Yeah, but yeah, ha have him. Like I I don't know I I don't I like. Yeah, you know, the the final form from Dracula X would be pretty good. Maybe the form from Symphony, but there's a couple different ways you could go about that. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think there's any one way that would be perfect for this. Yeah, especially since Dracula's final forms have taken a whole lot of variation. <laughs> As uh, Alucard once said about the castle itself, "It is a creature of chaos. It may have many incarnations." <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but the key th now the key th the key thing with this is that one even even with this kind of roster doing doing tag rules is something that I, is something that I'm leaving off the table it wouldn't work um but stuff like survival or t or team or team co or team fights that it that is certainly on the table and that whole elimination style team things cuz that's pretty much a staple in a lot of Mugen games anyways even though yeah, we're, we're skirting the line on this kind of thing um i would <coughs> i mean if you if truth be t i know that there were i know that there were the guest characters that that were utilized but truth be told if we were to utilize guest characters nowadays um there are there are only there are only two games that I that I can see, that I could see you utilizing a guest from. One of them is the penitent one from Blasphemous, and I'm pretty sure you can guess who the other one is. The Come songs on. would suggest otherwise. Come on, you've played Bloodstain as much as I have. Ah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, 
yeah, you kind of that one. I think you could be okay to throw in. I, I, I spoke. I I went with those two specifically because one, they've crossed over. Miriam it, Miriam appeared as a as a free LC for Blasphemous. And two, they um totally in one form or another they they would be the best fit. Now Mir with Miriam it's some it's somewhat obvious. Um, <laughs> it's made by the same guy who made most of the uh, handheld Castlevania games. That's yeah. really his bread and butter. And with the penitent one, although although blasphemous is significantly harder harder than bloodstained um you do have you do have you do have a similar element of gothic horror it's just that the gothic horror takes a takes a very um western europe religious bent a lo with a lot of nods to religious ar architecture from portugal and spain but i'd say that's still i'd say that's still within the wheelhouse of castlevania yeah. Let's see. Uh, with with sort of guest characters or sort of DLC crossover types, um, I've actually got a, a small list that I've been looking through as we've been talking. Um, these are properties that are owned or utilized by uh, Konami because, you know, remember, Castlevania is still a Konami uh, property. Even if they forget that it is. Yes, essentially, if they forget what it is, but these are, these are characters that have relations with Konami. I, I'd say if you want to keep with like your gothic sort of characters that can somewhat fit in the Castlevania universe, um, one of them I would use utilize would be Pyramid Head from Silent Hill. Probably, just probably because would, probably would fit enough. Probably would fit in that whole super armor approach. Just yeah, just big, big, big heavy hitter, big sword, slow does big damage. I would probably have would it make that a good he can't. Boss. That, I would probably have it that pyramid head can't dash. Oh god, no, 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 no dash and no jump. Mm -hmm. Um, um and, and another one I was looking at was uh, just because I reckon this would be a fairly interesting crossover uh ryuk from death note mm, uh mm. no that's i think that's a bit of a stretch okay all right throwing that one out then uh continuing uh how about some characters from metal gear another konami property yeah. not not solid snake because he's already You're in thinking Smash. of vamp aren't you no, but that's actually not a bad idea. I was actually thinking either Gray Fox or Raiden. Mm. Between the between the two between but, the two but, of them, but Vamp but Vamp I'd put up as a contender as well. Between the two of them I'd rather I'd rather go with I'd rather go with Gray Fox. Yeah. Espe especially since you could pro you could probably do some interesting things with the with with um with the stealth camo. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, he'd also be because he, he'd be a sword user as well. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I had, I had another one as a martial arts character because this is technically uh, published through Konami, or at least was at the time. Kenshiro. <laughs> <laughs> just, just because I want the memes. <laughs> See, I, that, I think that was one of the biggest problems with the uh, first Castlevania movie game was that a lot of their guest characters were very... Were, like, there was one that was from another similar type of game, which, okay, fine, but the rest were literally just there for the memes. Yeah, but this is... It. But again, we're utilizing Konami's uh, licensing base here. Like, two, two of the last three characters I had in my lineup were uh, sort of jerk characters. Um, one is Sparkster from Rocket Knight Adventures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and call no on that simply because it wouldn't. He, he wouldn't. It, not just the, the hitboxes right, would be would, terrible. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a smaller character Gone by in, design. So remember Gone in Tekken Three. Just saying. 
<laughs> y- Yoder and Soul Calibur. But yeah, I, I we... thought, I thought, and since trying to utilize Konami's properties, uh, go back to one of the <coughs> very first Konami titles with Aie Kung Fu and the oh, character shit. Oolong that was the original first protagonist in a martial arts game for Konami. Bit of a complete with thing. the complete with the sixteen complete with the old eight bit soundtrack too. Bit of a deep cut, but that feels still still too much on the joke character end of things. You're allowed to have one or two. It it it'd, it'd be that one that nobody would think about, but go holy crap when they see it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would say I. I would say when it com- when it comes to when it comes to doing bo- when it comes to doing a boss rush mode, one of the key things that I do with that is you don't recover health between fights. Yeah. I.e. I.e. It's it's far more of a survival. So so is it? I was about to say it's more of a survival boss rush than yeah the straight boss rush. Oh. I would say I would say that when it comes that um with some of with the I the tri- the trickiest the trickiest entries are going to be any um are going to be any protagonist that it that is in the Metroidvania style with an equipment setup which would which would include Miriam I'd a- I'd actually say the penitent wood would be. E- between the two that I suggested, the penitent one would be easier to implement because he only uses a sword and some occasional magic, or miracles if you pref- if you prefer, because this is still a he- this is still, well, just look at footage of Blasphemous and you'll see why you have to make that distinction. Yeah, with Miriam, you're you're going to have weapons and the shard system to deal with. Oh. I do think that some of the interactions, sh- some of the, I do think that when it, that she'd probably have the advantage of, of um eight of eight way projectiles. Like you could use you could use that as her as her as her as, as her bit as her big effect. Um, that would make sense. Kind of have her stand out between her and Soma since they would be very similar. Yeah. To. If, to the point that I, that I almost ca- I almost called Bloodstained the um the the Soma Cruise game that never was. But, uh, but um. As far as as far as the others, I know. You know when you when you mentioned Kenshiro, I was almost gonna say why not why. Why go with why go with Kenshiro when if you want to go full ridiculous, go with Jagi. Mainly because I figure the, the character was more notoriable. Hell, I was going to throw Goemon in there from, but you know. What did we just say about low hit boxes? <laughs> Stretch him out then. <laughs> Speak up! I can't hear you from down there. <laughs> When it com- but when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to it, I I do want I do want to touch on um on judgment. Um I do th- I I wanna make clear I don't like judgment. It does a lot of things that annoy me and then several things that piss me off. But I do think that on some levels judgment gets a bit of over hate. Because I've I've seen some people act like Judgment is the worst thing to happen to the Castlevania series. We could name worse. Oh yes. Um, I still consider I still consider my worst Castlevania experience to be the SNES Dracula X thing. Hmm. And even that's got some defenses to it. It's got some defenses. It's just that it was trying to it was trying to turn Rondo of Blood. Which was a PC Engine game into a SNES game. It was do- it was dead on arrival. 
Mm. Oh, mainly because the P because the PC ninety eight didn't really catch on in the states. Um. But with but with but a, a few thing a few things have to be made explicitly clear. Castlevania Judgment is not a fighting game in the vein of Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or King of Fighters. It is a party fighter in the same vein as in the same vein as the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games or Bleach Heat the Soul or any or any fighting game based on a popular anime and I'm including the I'm including the fighting game project that's ba that is um that is that is based on Demon Slayer that's that's currently in the works because if you want more recent examples you've got that you have Jump Force not exactly setting a strong example using that. Um, <laughs> th um, things, things like, sh things like Shonen Jump All Star, All Stars. Um, some several of several of the One Piece games. I would, um, and or things like My Hero One's Justice or One Punch Man, a hero nobody knows. See, I was trying to I was trying to steer away from those type of titles because they are uh, third party licensed. So the licensing agreement with that is not well, through Konami; it's through a third party. I'm bring I'm bringing those games up because those are because those party fighters are what Castlevania Judgment is trying to be. The I'd say I'd say there are two major problems. One. Is a, one is the fact that it was that, as mentioned before, Takashi Obata handling having him handle character design wasn't bad on paper. The bad came from a lack of ar a lack of artistic direction. In some cases, you had characters who really worked within his style. Then you have cases like like Maria or Death. Or, or even, or even, even what he, even what he did with, um, si with Simon Belmont, where he looks way too much like Light. Although that, I'd say that's a case of bad timing because Death Note was at the peak of its popularity at the time. Yeah, inevitably that was going to happen. Oh. Um, but the, but the problem, the problem was whoever there wasn't there. There wasn't any, there wasn't anybody in the art department to tell him, okay, these are the characters you're utilizing. These are these have been some of the recurring motifs with those characters' designs. So please stick to that as best you can. Yeah, Eric Lacard, I think, would be a perfect example of that. Because what about Eric Lacard ever made it seem like he was a kid, or or even or even that level of arrogance? Yeah. Well, that's less about the design and more just about the personality. That's yeah, Konami's fault. <laughs> well, the, on the person, but I'd I'd say the other major problem, it being on the Wii, right uh, at the same time that that Nintendo was trying to push really hard to say, look at how awesome our motion controls are, even when you put them in a game where they didn't belong. Yeah, that kind of blew up in everybody's face. Not to mention Konami's. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I'll be pushing any buttons when I say that I do not miss motion controls one bit. No, I mean it, when when utilized correctly, they were they were a lot of fun. But the the list of games that actually utilize motion controls uh, correct uh, in a good way, that's including Nintendo, is very short. Yeah, I will admit I have a soft spot for Red Steel Two. But I think I think that's because I think that's largely because of the aesthetic it's going for. As a instead of instead of trying to be a poor man's yakuza like the first Red Steel was, they went with this mix of samurai cowboys. Which, as a fan of as a fans of Gonzo stuff, when it comes to when it comes to Weird West, I wholeheartedly approve of. The problem was balancing issues. Namely, ha namely, having certain specials be auto win buttons, but like when I th when I think about games that de that actually utilized uh, motion controls properly, obviously the big one is No More Heroes, and that's kind of praising with faint dams. 
because we because we all know we all know what the immediate joke is whenever you bring up motion controls and no more heroes. Oh, time to recharge! Time to recharge my beam katana. <laughs> Make sure nobody walks in when you're charging your beam katana. Uh, but the but the but the reason I wanted to do this kind of thing is the idea of a Castlevania fighter is not a bad is not a bad idea on paper. And hell, um, a lot of people a lot of people balked at the idea of turning Final Fantasy into a fighter, and we saw how well that turned out when given how we got three games out of it. Yeah, it's very. It is it is very easy to dis to dismiss um, a game a game jumping genres as milking as we as we saw when um, the when Persona Four Arena came out. Um, but in but in truth, there's nothing there. As long as it's done properly, there's not as much of an issue. And often often, well, I'll probably I'll probably tackle this sometime in twenty in twenty twenty two, but. Recently, it, recently there was that statement from Square, from Square, where they where they tried to claim that the the reason Marvel's Avengers failed was because Idos Montreal was the wrong studio to handle it, which is technically true, but also wrong. No, the the reason it failed was the implementation of trying to do a poor man's destiny with Mar with 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 the Avengers. It was trying to make a games as a service product at a time where people are getting sick of games as a service. Well, there's that. There's there's that too. There's certainly that too. And maybe maybe Marvel's Avengers will be will be something we ta we tackle in a reconstruction in 2022. I'll think about it when I'll think about it when we cross that bridge. But with all with all that said. This is this is certainly a fun little experiment in design, and we ended up getting a decent roster out of it in the process. Um, I would now next week we'll be do we'll be doing something a bit more on the fan theory end of end of things, but a sequel to a, to a pre to a previous project. Now, as far now as far as what's coming in what's coming in the ne in the next week. Now that I am more or less back, it it's as good a time as any to get back on the to get back on the interview grind. I won't be doing one tomorrow, but I will be doing interviews again starting on Tuesday, so that'll be fun. And of course, on the 14th, we'll have a new episode of Geek Watch all all ready for you. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. And join the watch. <laughs>